All right, it is already time for my December 2022 homeschool update. Now the biggest change in our homeschool month was that my family came back, which means that my youngest sisters are back with us. We're getting to see them several times throughout the week and they are back to their homeschool after a six month break during which they were traveling in the USA. We are so happy to have them back and later on in this video, I'm going to be updating you on what the girls are actually doing for their schoolwork because the curriculum plans video I made quite a while back, I don't think 100% matches up with the real life of what they're actually doing. But first, an update on how our December school month went. We did school solidly for the first couple weeks of December. And so once my husband's school break and break from work started, we took off on our break as well, our Christmas break to make the most of the time that he had with us. And we had a lot of fun. We have been having a lot of fun. He's still on his break um, as this video is being released and we're enjoying that a great deal. We've been going to the beach a little bit extra, visiting all the playgrounds. We haven't taken any big trips, but we have done a lot of just spending time outdoors. Of course, some school-like things do happen throughout these the days when we're at home a little bit more. My son's still been doing a little bit of reading, practicing reading his books. I have, of course, been still reading to my kids. We do coloring or we might get out the random workbook page or two but it has not been very, it's not been our typical school routine at all. I've not been trying to make progress in our curriculums. We have just been having a lot of fun together. Um, but I am gonna highlight a couple of standout resources from the month. The first thing I wanna talk about that I did not expect my son to enjoy as much as he did was the Nutcracker. This is something I'm really going to remember from this Christmas and this month was how much he just, the Nutcracker captured his imagination this month, which we did read this book, The Nutcracker, and I also had these um, story sequencing cards, which I believe are from Green Urban Mama, and they were part of a bundle I picked up quite a while ago, or maybe it was a bundle that I was actually part of. I don't remember how I got these, <laughs> um, but I had these Nutcracker sequencing story cards that I decided to print out and we used those a few times um, when we read the book and then we sequenced the story afterwards. We watched um, a, kind of a highlights version of the ballet on YouTube, which was a 30, it was like 35 minutes of highlights, kind of like a shorter form telling the story of the Nutcracker and my son was just enthralled all the way through it. And my husband was asking what four-year-old wants to watch ballet for 35 minutes, and it was this one. Um, something about the story just really captured his imagination. One more Nutcracker resource we ended up using was actually at bedtime every night. I typically will let each of the boys choose one song to listen to. And for the past couple months, my littlest always chooses Un Elefante Se Balanceaba, which is a Spanish nursery rhyme song. And my older son typically chooses La Bamba by Richie Valens, which we were introduced to through a book in Beautiful Mundo. But throughout December, it was, it was a little bit more than 50-50. He didn't want to choose La Bamba. He wanted to choose the Nutcracker. So there is a podcast called Your Classical Kids Storytime, something like that. I'll link it below, but it has little stories that include classical music in the storytelling. They're usually pretty short and they have one for the Nutcracker. However, the Nutcracker episode is 16 minutes long, which is more time than I want to spend on their nightly song. But I would ask him, okay, what part do you want to listen to? And he usually wanted to listen to the part about the Mouse King and the Nutcracker fighting. So usually almost every night in December, he would listen to that, that part and he would just, he would have the biggest smile on his face and would be so excited just listening to this story being told. So uh, I always want to remember this, this one Christmas when the Nutcracker just fascinated him, especially that fight between the mice and the soldiers. The next thing I want to mention was that our countdown to Christmas was really fun. I feel like this was the first year that my son, my older son, really captured onto the idea of what a countdown was and could kind of have enough concept of numbers and of time to get it. So actually the cover of 
our Christmas countdown was something he really liked going to and I constantly saw him getting out this book on his own and like kind of studying the pictures and being like, okay, mama, we're here today. So we have this many more days to go and these are all the days we already did. And he would, he would like look ahead to try to figure out which picture came next. So I found him with this um, little unit cover several times throughout the month trying to figure it out and he loved, he really loved the countdown this year. I think like he got, he has more sense of numbers so that's why he got it. Next update as far as how it's going with teaching and reading and we are using All About Reading. I feel like it's going very well. But one thing I want to mention is that All About Reading, if you know the program, you know that it includes lots and lots of practice sheets, which this is a good idea for building fluency. Kids need extra practice with reading some of the same words to build their fluency, to realize, hey, I know this word. It's not a bad idea. However, these sheets can seem kind of boring. And I'm not the mom who says, oh no, all of your schoolwork needs to be super, super interesting and it can never be boring. I can see value in doing boring things. However, in this case, I must admit that I am a, I'm kind of sympathetic to my child who feels like, what's the point of reading this long list of words? Like I can feel a little bit sympathetic. He just is much more motivated to practice his reading when he's reading a book. That's something that's exciting to him when he's getting to read a little book and turn the pages. So and to give him some extra practice at the level of words that he knows, I've been pulling in a classic, which are the Sing Spell Read and Write readers. Um, he's just a, he's basically finished book three. He's also hopped in a little bit to book five because for some reason he just really wanted to read the story in book five. Um, can't, it's hard to argue with an early reader um, when they're really interested in a story. Um, these are out of print, I'm pretty sure. So the specific recommendation is not going to be helpful for you, but the general idea that um, in, in areas like just beginning to learn how to read, I do think motivation really does matter. And I think one of the reasons my son is making so much progress relatively quickly is because of his motivation and he's motivated to read books. So I haven't been really trying to force the sheets or make a whole game out of the sheets because he's not that motivated by a reading game. He's motivated because he wants to read a book. So I've been pulling in extra books from my mom's collection. This is a time when it's great to have a mom who's been homeschooling almost 38 years. <laughs> so she has quite the collection and this has been, this is a really great series. Sorry, it's not very useful to you because it is out of print and pretty hard to find. Okay, now an update on the big kids. Uh, I just wanna kind of give you a little rundown of what they are using for their homeschool now that they've finally gotten home and gotten back to a normal homeschool routine. They did school for just a couple of weeks before starting Christmas break, but that was enough time to kind of figure out, okay, yes, what are we doing? This is what we're doing. So for the 11th grader, she is using sunlight and she is doing the church history year, which I believe is level 200. The literature, history, Bible, and that is covering her writing as well, because within the literature guide and within the history, I think occasionally they have writing projects. So she's getting their writing project assignment from Sunlight and then I am going over those projects with her. So that's covering all of those subjects, including writing. For math, she is doing calculus. And for this, she is using both Matthew C and Life of Fred for calculus. For her science, she is doing Apologia high school level chemistry and then she's also doing physics. This is not like a normal thing. It's because she is very close to being done with her chemistry book. She didn't quite have enough time to finish it before they left on their break. And then she is just at the beginning of the next level physics. And I did tell my mom, hey, you know, a lot of times classes don't actually finish the whole textbook, even in a public or private school. And she's like, yeah, I know we don't necessarily have to finish the entire chemistry textbook, but they want to. They want to make sure that they do completely cover all those concepts that are included. So it's not really a problem for them to have a couple weeks of overlapping of finishing up chemistry while also still starting physics to make sure that they will have enough time to finish physics um, within this next year. Then she is also still working on her apology at health course. She started that already before they left, um, but it's just continuing with where she stopped it. And her final subject for a pretty impressive high school load is Mandarin Chinese. Now for my youngest sister, she is in roughly, I think we're saying sixth grade. 
she's 11. She is doing an older version of what I believe is now Sunlight B and C, Intro it's Introduction to World History, a combined version of like early world history and later world history. And that is a little bit, that level, she's a little bit older than what Sunlight recommends as the ideal age level for that program. But she is doing it at, independently. She's not doing it as mom reading aloud the books to her. She's actually able to read the books herself. So it's a little bit of a non-traditional way to use Sunlight, but so far it's actually been working pretty well. Then for her math, she is doing Matthew C. Zeta and Life of Fred Pre-Algebra Zero with Physics. I don't have their books here, so I'm trying to pop them up on the screen so that you can see what they look like. For science, she is doing the Exploring Creation with Physics from Apologia. And I do have a video on this course, so I will link that down below. And then for her language, she is doing Abeka's Grammar and Composition Book 1. So that's just like a quick overview and update on the resources that they are using as they have just come back, jumped into normal life and normal homeschooling life after their big and very educational adventure in 2022. So I'm obviously filming this from the middle of our December break. So looking back on these weeks of school uh, with fond memories, uh, but I'm also looking forward to when we start school again after the break. I love breaks. I think everybody does, every homeschooler does. But I also think one of the great benefits of taking a couple of weeks off of school for Christmas or for a summer break is it gives you the opportunity to miss school, um, which it can be hard to miss school when you're doing it every day. But a couple of weeks off gives you time to miss school, to miss the subjects, to miss your daily routine. And I am finding that I'm missing it. Um, as we've been off for these couple of weeks, I've been glad to be doing different things, but I also look forward to returning to our normal, beautiful homeschool routine. All right, I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.